Okay, right. So, um, welcome those who are here. Um, really good to be uh, uh, working together with you tonight. Uh, my name is Ingemar Hunnings, and um, I'm a solicitor. Um, I am going to be talking through um, the SQE and the QWE. <clears throat> From the information I've gathered, I'm not the SRA. So um, yeah, in the end, the final arbiter is the SRA, but it's just information that I've gathered as I've been going along. And I sort of ended up um, being a bit of a subject expert uh, on this. <clears throat> so um, what I'm gonna do is uh, take off my video and uh, share my screen now, because I'll be using that as an aid to what we're doing here. And uh, those people who've got their video on, the purpose of this is to give you as much information as I can about the uh, SQE and um, uh, about qualifying work experience and to try and help people who have questions about the uh, exemptions that you might be able to get. Um, I'll talk for a while and then there'll be a big Q&A there'll be a big Q&A and if you can write your questions into the chat that would be uh, really helpful. If I just uh, find that chat I should have a message in here that I can send to everyone here. There we go and see that. Right so a little bit about me. I am a solicitor. Spent 24 years in practice, private practice in, um, uh, in England. Um, I was a litigator um, and I ended up being a, a, an equity partner for 14 years. I was headed, head of a department of 60 people, litigators. Um, and then in 2014, I stepped out of that and set up my management consultancy. You can see the website here. And it says what we are, a one-stop shop for business support for law firms. We help law firms with the business of running their business. So that's all the stuff around compliance. We work with a number of case management systems, um, helping law firms with that. Basically, if you have a question about running your law firm, we can either supply the answer or we know someone who can. One of our firms, we have over 500 law firm clients, reached out to me in 2020 to say, look, this new SQE is coming along. Um, and um, we understand that the qualifying work experience if we don't have anyone in our firm to confirm it, we can reach out to someone external. Can you help us? Which caused me then to start researching into that. And as a result of that, lots of liaising with the SRA to check what I was doing was OK. Um, then uh, I uh, developed a service to act as an external confirming solicitor for QWE. I think at the moment I'm the only person doing that. We've done this for over 45 um, aspiring solicitors now confirm their qualifying work experience to the SRA, people right across the world. So that's why it's put me in a position of some knowledge recently, because I foolishly researched um, the situation for foreign qualified lawyers, then lots of them have been asking me stuff about that as well. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's where we are with that, and that's the background um, and how I've come in to, to be in this position. What is the SQE? Why is it here? So the old way to qualify was through the LPC, um, which frankly wasn't fit for purpose. Can I please ask the person who's still not on to switch off uh, their volume? OK, we've got many people on here and it's going to be really difficult if that person continues without being muted. Thank you. <clears throat> OK. Right, uh, so the LPC route um, has been replaced by the SQE. And really you need to put aside your thoughts as to what the LPC used to be. It's not that the, the SQE is modifying it, it is a completely new route to uh, uh, qualifying as a solicitor <clears throat> of England and Wales. The uh, um, Part of the problem with the, with the LPC was that somewhere between 20 and 40 percent of people who passed their LPC could never get a training contract, which was a huge waste of time, money and effort. Um, there were also questions about diver ethnic diversity and, 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 and such like uh, with that as well. So it's been replaced. The SQE came in in the autumn of 2021. We're in a transition period which lasts until um, uh, the end of the decade. 
and obviously that causes some confusion as to which route people should follow and such like. <clears throat> if uh, you start your degree um, after the autumn of 2021, so after September 2021, you cannot go down the LPC route, you have to go down the SQE route. If you're already on the SQE, the, the LPC route at that, that sta stage, you have the option to move over to the uh, SQE route should you wish. So what is the SQE route? Well, there are four elements that you need to satisfy um, uh, before you can qualify as an English and Welsh solicitor uh, under the SQE. So first of all, you need to have a degree or degree equivalent. Secondly, you need to pass the exams. Thirdly, you need to have two years full-time equivalent qualifying work experience confirmed to the SRA by an SRA regulated solicitor. And fourthly, you need to um, uh, pass an assessment, sign a paper or something uh, uh, that you're uh, of suitable character, which is actually the same as with the as it was with the LPC. So I'll go through each of those um, and then we'll look at uh, wrinkles um, and exemptions and such like. <clears throat> I'll go through them in orders one, two and four and then spend some time on the uh, QWE because that causes people a lot of uh, questions. Um, so um, <clears throat> this, I've got a few of these. Now, I'm using my website because I put my research onto the website. It's there as a, as a resource for me, but also a resource for you. Um, so feel free to go and research this. You can see in the blog when I've looked things up, it's not just about QW and SQE as ICO stuff and compliance stuff, but there's a lot in there for you. So the first element to pass your SQE is you need to have a degree or degree equivalent. And it, notice it does not have to be a law degree. OK, and it does not actually have to be a degree. It's a degree or degree equivalent. The I got here the link to the SRA page, OK, but I've digested it. And that's often what I've done here. So you 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 can use this method here to validate it. There is there are some charges. Um, OK, now um, notice that it does not need to be a law degree. There's no GDL or um, <coughs> Uh, transition exam that you need to take. If someone's telling yeah, you to take that, with the change please do the Can please, please, can everyone mute themselves? Thank you. All right. Right. So the um, you don't need to do a converter course. You just do your degree or de a degree equivalent. Um, and that's that. So if an, a university or someone is telling you that you need to do a GDL, thank you, that's not coming from the SRA, okay? You might need to do a bit more work if you have done a degree in a different subject to get the basics of, of, of law, but that's just in order to help you pass the exams. So the second element is the exams, okay? <clears throat> so let's move on to that. There are two exams, the SQE1, and the SQE2. You cannot apply, cannot apply to take the SQE2 until you've passed the SQE1. These are quite different from the LPC. The LPC was set by each of the training providers, universities, University of Law, BPP, whoever. Um, and so there wasn't real uniformity. The SQE exams are set by the SRA, administered by Kaplan, and they're the same exams that everyone has to take. Okay, so there's uniformity. The SRA has, has effectively taken back control because it's a regulatory body, so it can say, right, who has met the standard to be authorized as a solicitor of England and Wales? There is um, a charge for the exams. I wouldn't guarantee that's 100% up to date, that figure, but you can look that up. Okay, the SQE1 is two exams, um, function, functional legally, functioning legal knowledge, uh, so FLK 1 and 2. Uh, each of them is 180 multiple choice questions, about 10 hours of exam time. It is tough. Um, it's very granular, very detailed. Um, down to the level of which part of which form would you fill in in this scenario? 
Um, okay, and it's covering these practice areas. Bizarrely, it doesn't cover family. And I've asked the SRA in um, a couple of webinars and they pointedly ignored me as to why family is not covered, but this is the areas that are covered. So this is testing you on your legal knowledge, okay? So that's the SQE1. That's been sat twice so far. And uh, of the people who've sat the exam each time, about 55% have passed. These can be sat in the Pearson View test centers, both in the UK and abroad. In the UK, those test centers are used for testing you on your driving uh, theory. Um, so, but, and, and also internationally. There's not enough internationally, but there are some internationally, okay? So you don't need to travel to the UK for that. Those are multiple choice. Once you pass that, you can apply for the SQE2 exam, which is testing you on the application of your knowledge into 16 real life scenarios. So there are 16 written and oral tests, totaling 14 hours of exam time, as it says there. 12 are written, four are oral. It takes a number of days. You do still have to travel to the UK for those exams. You can't do them abroad. I hope that in the future you can. Um, and it's going to test you not only on your knowledge, but skills as well. And the QWE, which you see creeping up here, is actually prep for the uh, uh, SQE2 exam. I'll talk more about that later. So um, the SQE2 has been sat twice so far. The most recent one is only a few weeks ago. We're still wait awaiting the results on that. The first SQE2 exam um, of the people who sat it, 77% passed. Uh, so we do have people who are now English and Welsh solicitors who've come through the SQE route. So that's the SQE1 and SQE2. You may get some exemptions. I'll talk about those later. Now, um, I put up here a page to do with the, uh, or listing the training providers, the non-university ones. The SRA has a list, but it's just a list. So what I've done is I've tried to take the non-university ones uh, and giving you a little digest about them. Um, there are more players in the marketplace than non-university players than there used to be. Do have a look through there. The traditional providers are the more expensive providers. Uh, there's a lot, you know, a lot. There's a bit of variety in there, which is going to help. I've given you a little bit of a digest here on these ones here. But you'll need to speak uh, with indicative prices, of course, here. But you'll need to speak with uh, the actual providers themselves to get more detail in there. They're providing a lot of material to help you with learning as you're going along. So that's just a resource in there uh, for you. OK, so we looked at the degree or degree equivalent, we've looked at the uh, exams that you have to pass. As I said, the final element is uh, the uh, being the statement of um, suitable character and such like. So let's go back to the third element, which is qualifying work experience. And a lot of people struggle with this concept. It's actually quite revolutionary and can be really helpful. And it puts you as aspiring solicitors in the driving seat. So, um, there's something I chucked up on what is um, uh, qualifying work experience, but that's not exactly easy to read. So let me digest this for you. You need to have two years full time equivalent qualifying work experience, which is confirmed to the SRA by an SRA regulated solicitor. OK, so first of all, what is full time? Um, the SRA has being quite careful not to uh, stipulate what that is. Um, it's down to the judgment of the confirming solicitor. Now, it has to be a solicitor, by the way. It can't be a barrister or a foreign qualified lawyer or a legal exec, legal exec. It needs to be a solicitor because they are regulated by the SRA. And effectively, we're standing in the place of the SRA to do uh, the confirmation. Because if you think of it, there's thousands of pieces of QWE that need to be confirmed every every year. The SRA does not have the manpower to do that internally, nor the knowledge. OK, so my personal view is that full time or full time equivalent is 30 to 35 hours a week. And then it just becomes a question of maths. So if you were doing 16 hours a week, it's going to take you four years to get two years full time equivalent. It will be a question of piecing together the time uh, to 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 
get your 24 months full time equivalent. Um, but a different confirming solicitor may have a different view. It's them that's doing the confirmation, so you're asking them. Um, so then what is qualifying work experience itself? Well, the SRA has um, given us a definition of the provision of legal services, but hasn't really gone much further than that, other than to say it does not need to be done in a law firm. It does not need to be done in England and Wales. It does not um, need to be in English or Welsh law. It doesn't even need to be paid. And you can reach back in time as far as you want to get your qualifying work experience. You can also reach out to an external uh, person, uh, a solicitor, to confirm your qualifying work experience. And we do provide that service uh, on there. And as I said, I've done that for over 45 people now. Um, so what is qualifying work experience? It's going to be down to the judgment of the confirming solicitor. So the sort of things that I'm looking out for when I'm uh, checking this is that it's not the provision of administrative service or the provision of financial services or um, the observation of legal services. You need to actually be doing it. Uh, and uh, but, it, but it's the skills that the SRA are looking for, not the law. The law is tested in the exams. Um, as an external confirming solicitor, I have to do more than, in, than an internal. An internal would have seen you doing the work, and it's a very simple process to confirm the qualifying work experience. You simply ask them for their SRA number, and if they are willing to do it, you would go on to the SRA website, to your My SRA portal, um, and put in the name of the organization, the dates of the qualifying work experience that you want to have confirmed, um, the period, so how many months, and then search for the uh, confirming solicitor by their SRA number. And then that will prompt the SRA to email that solicitor something along the lines of, dear so-and-so, this aspiring solicitor has asked, has said you're the confirming solicitor for uh, X number of months of their QWE, please click on this link to go and confirm it. It will take that confirming solicitor to their own MySRA uh, profile on the SRA website where they'll need to ask, answer some questions. When they do, it will then prompt the website to email you as the aspiring solicitor to tell you that that QWE has been confirmed. And that can take half a day or less. So it's well aut automated. Initially, it was quite slow and clunky, but now it's quite slick and smooth. As an external, I would need to actually go through the work with you, and I would also need to reach out to your supervisor to get feedback because I wasn't there at the time. So there's a bit more work that has to be done, but at least you can move forward, whereas before you couldn't. So I've tried to answer a few questions with regard to the, S the QWE in what I've said. One thing further I should say is you have up to four, but no more than four as I'm aware, placements within which to gather your qualifying work experience. Um, so you need to be careful as to what you're going to pick to be your QWE, because if it's a two, two, two month placement and you've got three or four of those, <laughs> If you take three of them, that's a month and a half, well, sorry, it was six months, and you've got another 18 months in one place. So you're just narrowing your options as to how you're gonna get your 24 months. Obviously, if it's more than 24 months, it's not a problem. Uh, and you can reach back as far as you want in time, although the reality of still being able to find the people who could confirm your qualifying work experience, or if it's as an external, being able to get the evidence together for the external confirming solicitor to review, those there, might, there are practical considerations which may cause a problem. And I have had people who've had to abandon qualifying work experience because they just can't get the evidence together. Email accounts have been shut down, the firm's shut down, people have retired, et cetera, et cetera. Right, something else to mention to you, which is really, really interesting and can be very helpful to you. The SRA has been very careful to make sure that the SQE meets the um, requirements for the apprenticeship scheme. So the first time that lawyers have really come into this, um, and this is as graduate apprentices. Now, this is relevant to the UK. 
certainly to England, I, I understand Wales and Scotland has a slightly different regime. People who are abroad, it's not going to apply, unfortunately. So again, I've done a lot of research on this. Uh, let's pull that down here, apprenticeships and the SQE. What this means is that potentially you can have the government paying for your exam costs and your study costs, which is phenomenal. They're saving you thousands of pounds. Your employer, because you would need to be employed, would need to put you onto the scheme. And they would do that by reaching out to SQE apprentice training providers that are approved and, uh, and on the approved list as training providers um, under the apprenticeship scheme. The only two that are at the moment is the University of Law and BPP, not because the others aren't good. It's just because the government shut the scheme uh, for new entrants, for tra new training entrants, um, when we had the first lockdown in 2021 and they haven't opened it up yet. So all of the other people who are training since the SQE has come in can't get onto the list, which is hugely anti-competitive. Hopefully that will be opened up. Anyway, it doesn't bother you because it's the government and us, the taxpayer, who's paying for um, uh, your study fees. So. You need to speak to your employer. There's an article on there where I put all my information. These guys, the Apprenticeship Support Service, are very, very helpful. If you want to message me um, afterwards, I can put you in touch with someone. Um, the contact is at the University of Law who can help and talk you through. So do not discount that if you're in the UK. That's really, really helpful. I see something in the chat. I'm going to ignore those until I get to looking at the questions. That's fine. If you have questions as we're going along, put them in, but I'll look at them later. So apprenticeships, really, really, really important, can be very, very helpful for you uh, financially uh, with regard to that. OK, right. What about now exemptions? So. First of all, if you are an aspiring solicitor, so not qualified, OK, and you passed your LPC, but now want to move over to the SQE route, the SRA are highly likely to give you an exemption. I haven't heard of anyone rejected yet, an exemption from the SQE 1 exam. You need to apply through your MySRA um, profile on the SRA website and they will um, give you exemption from that. You won't get exemption from SQE2. Um, the only people I know who are entitled to apply for ex exemption from SQE2 are foreign qualified lawyers. So if you're not qualified, but you passed your LPC, you're, uh, you are um, highly likely to get exemption from SQE1. And it, there doesn't seem to be any um, effective uh, uh, um, deadline for that, how far back in time you can reach, which surprises me somewhat, but there we go. Um, okay, so then it gets, um, no, there, there is another route, which is, um, I'm not a real expert on, which was the equivalent means, which really comes from the old LPC route, where you feel you put together a massive dossier of evidence to say that actually you've got experience across all the practice areas covered in the exams to a high degree so that you don't need to take the exam uh, and you pay a fee of 600 pounds wait half a year to see if the SRA are going to exempt you uh, it seems to me the barrier is so high there that you might as well take the exam anyway that's your call on that one um, now there are all sorts of <laughs> things to say about foreign qualified lawyers and exemptions. So I'll do my best here, um, but it gets really quite Byzantine. Um, uh, and I sometimes feel the SRA are making this up as they go along. If you're a foreign qualified lawyer, um, you cannot use the QLTS route any longer. That was stopped when the SQE came in. OK. Um, foreign qualified lawyers are exempt from the requirement for two years uh, qualifying work experience. OK, just take that, put it to one side. You're exempt from the QWE. OK. Um, so SQE1 and SQE2, the SRA has said that it is unlikely, very unlikely that they're going to grant exemption to you from taking the SQE1 exam. There are some very, very uh, few 
which will get exemption because their law is so similar to that of England and Wales, like Northern Ireland. Uh, OK. <clears throat> um, so that, that's just the basic, basic line under that. Foreign qualified lawyers can apply for exemption from the SQE2 exam. OK. Um, now, there are some countries where the SRA has had a look at it and they think, yep, OK, in general, that's fine. Or you can make an individual application. If your country isn't listed in those which has had been looked at by the SRA, it's because they haven't looked at them. It's not that they said your system is rubbish. No, you can't apply. <clears throat> and I hear of people being granted SQ2 exemptions. It's fairly early days on this. The SRA will says that they will take um, 265 days, I think it is. No, it's 180 days for a fee of 265 pounds. That's where that comes from. 180 days to consider the application. They may be much quicker than that. There is a form that you fill in. Normally you fill in, and I'm not gonna go through the form, but I'll just talk you through it quickly. Sections one, two, three, and four uh, 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 as a foreign qualified lawyer. And then it's a question of what you do. You can fill in five and six, which is all about exemption from the, the SQE1 exam. Frankly, I wouldn't bother because the, the bar is so high. Section seven, then if you have two years professional legal experience, as part of qualifying, not in England and Wales, but in your country, your jurisdiction, then you would fill in section 7A, simple, straightforward, and that's that. If your um, professional legal experience was gained, now that's, that's at least two years, was gained after you qualified in your foreign jurisdiction, then you would fill in section 7B. If it's a combination of those two, it's section 7C. And if it's um, you haven't yet got it, you fill in eight and there's quite a lot of effort and work there. Frankly, I would just carry on and get the two years. Now, as well as it, 7B and 7C, where you've got the two years after or a mixture of before and after uh, qualifying in your foreign jurisdiction, you will also need to get a certificate of good conduct from your regulatory body. You'll also need to get a letter of um, reference from your supervisor, the person who was supervising you when you were doing that um, legal work. <clears throat> and it may be more than one letter if it takes more than one to get the two years. OK, it's quite clear what you need to do. Um, uh, and I'm just looking whether I brought that up. I didn't bring that up on here, but there's some guidance on the website. Uh, if I grab that one there um, on, on, on what to do. There we go, SQE2 exemption. So there's guidance up on there as to what to do. This is a bit I'm talking about in here. OK, so just work your way through it. It should be fairly straightforward, um, but we can help if you need, need help. OK, there are some weird things so that if you are a foreign qualified lawyer, um, but passed your LPC, then um, you still have to sit the SQE and have to have your qualifying work experience confirmed by a foreign qualified, by an, um, uh, an SRA regulated solicitor. Weird, but uh, you know, that's been confirmed. Someone double, triple checked it with the SRA and that's what they were told. Bizarre. Okay. QLTS. So <laughs> if you were part of the way through qualifying with the QLTS when the SQE came in, like you passed your, uh, your MCT, but you hadn't passed the OSCE, you've got two options, okay? So QLTS transitional route, there is a deadline. So if you passed your MCT, you must take and pass the SQE2 and apply for admission before the 31st of March, or by the 31st of March, 2024. So there is a deadline, the SRA has set for that. Alternatively, you can jump over to the SQE route, um, and this is actually quoted from here, you're exempt from the SQE, uh, sorry, from the QWE, um, and um, yeah, you've got this here. <clears throat> so you can also, um, SQE1, SQE2, so you're going to have to go through that full route there. So what does it happen to say? So if you passed your MC, uh, you apply 
for admission without delay if you pass the MCT but not the OSCE, take and pass the SQE2 and apply for admission or take and pass SQE1 and then you could apply for perhaps for exemption from SQE2. Uh, there we go. So um, lots and lots of wrinkles on there. I've tried to cover those. There's most of the scenarios that have been thrown at me. Um, yeah, but this is in, I mean, the good news is that overall, this is making it much easier for people to qualify, not because the exams are easier, but it actually gives more flexibility around your, your life. Um, and uh, whereas before, the law firms had you in, an, in an, uh, a neck lock and you were dependent upon their good grace to give you a, a training contract. Now you can say, well, look, I'm working as a paralegal. That is qualifying work experience. Please, can you confirm it? And if the firm, if a solicitor refuses to do so, you can reach out to the SRA, SRA Ethics, and they will take a very dim view. And it could eventually be a disciplinary issue for the solicitor who's unreasonably refusing to confirm your qualifying work experience. And I've had that confirmed by pol a policy officer of the SRA who wrote that as a comment on one of my posts on LinkedIn when I was ranting about someone who was facing this situation of uh, a solicitor refusing to confirm her qualifying work experience for no reason that we could understand at all, other than they don't do training contracts or they don't do it or they don't like the SQE or something like that. So there's a huge shift in power so that you will be much more in control of your, um, your career than has been the case in the past. Bear in mind or remember also for those in the UK, you've got the benefit of the apprenticeship scheme. For those people who are abroad, you've got the ability to do most of this remotely. You don't have to travel to the UK to get a training contract. So you could actually qualify from abroad with the exception of one journey to take your SQE2 exam. Revolutionary. And it means that it can, I think, enhance in the English and Welsh legal jurisdiction as the uh, primary law of commerce around the world. OK, I've talked a long time. What I'm going to do is stop sharing for a moment and start looking at the uh, um, the chat and what people have been putting in there. Um, and I will do my best to answer as I go through here. OK, so first of all, I've got uh, the solicitor we put on our referral, can it be any solicitor or does he or she must comply with some additional regulation? Do you mean, this is Francisca, do you mean the solicitor who's going to confirm your qualifying work experience? If that is the case, then you need to ask their permission. First of all, they need to be regulated by the SRA. They don't need to have any other qualification beyond that. I hope that answers the question. Um, thanks for useful webinar. How potentially would an external SRA solicitor would be able to speak to my supervisor abroad um, to confirm my QWE without knowing my language? <laughs> that is a challenge. Sometimes I've had to, first of all, I've got to look at the work and I've had people to, having to, con, to translate it out of German. French I can almost manage with, Arabic I haven't got a chance with. Um, so I have had some translated, and I have had, I'm thinking particularly of some people in Poland, um, where I've had someone sitting in as a translator. Um, so but most of the time I found that people do speak English, um, uh, and it's not an issue, but yeah, there are means and ways around that. And by the way, the translation thing, I did check with the SRA, so I know that's okay. I've got here, I'm a qualified lawyer in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I'm qualified, in, how can I get exemption from SQE1? Well, I have a word with the SRA, but I think your chance, chances of getting exemption from SQE1 are vanishingly small, unless you've already passed your, well, no, actually vanishingly small, probably. Um, possibly if you've already passed the LPC, but beyond that, I think you're going to have to sit it. Because the SRA wants to make sure that you understand the English law if you're going to be an English solicitor. As we're in the same field, I would recommend create a WhatsApp group to keep updating in this changes. There are lots of groups. There's a couple of WhatsApp groups I'm a member of. There's, a, there's an SQE group. 
well, there's one, I'm a member of on LinkedIn, but there are others. Um, I've been told there are groups on Facebook. So um, yeah, I don't have, I don't control one myself. Um, I put a lot of stuff out, but yeah, I mean, you as aspiring solicitors, you know, share this amongst yourselves as to any group membership there and, and let people in. Uh, Dinaris, uh, thank you, uh, Ingemar, for your help. My degree from 2006 said that I'm a qualified international lawyer. How I, however, I'm not holding a solicitor certificate. Um, in the country where I received my uh, qualifying degree in 2006, the system was much easier. And after such a degree, you automatically called yourself a lawyer. How do I deal with the issue? Well, you're a lawyer, but you're not an English solicitor. And so if you want to become an English solicitor, you have to do what the SRA says. So as a uh, foreign qualified lawyer, you will have to sit the SQE1, but probably will get exemption from SQE2. And you don't need to do the QWE. And I presume you already have a degree. Um, so um, yeah, you said you have a degree. So yeah, um, probably you're going to end up sitting the SQE1 um, which you could do at an international um, Pearson View Centre. And then now the SRA has said that if someone um, was magically able to get exemption from both the SQE1 and the SQE2, they may still want someone to sit some sort of exam to demonstrate that they have a, um, a good mastery of English, which I suppose is fair enough, because if you're an English solicitor, there's an ex expectation that you can speak English and write English. Anyway, I'll throw that one out there. Um, Yusuf, I'm currently pursuing my degree in international law in Cyprus. Um, I was told it was told to me that I need to hold the diploma of LLB UK, UK University in order to apply for the SQE. Can you confirm this? No, it's a part of rubbish. Um, <laughs> you can have your degree from Cyprus. Um, and you can qualify as a lawyer in Cyprus if you want to and follow that route, or with your degree or degree equivalent, you can then sit the SQE1 and the SQE2, and if you're not qualified, then you would need to get your QWE, but you might get your QWE in, in Cyprus. You don't need to have an LLB at all, anyone, uh, anywhere, and certainly you don't need to get one from the UK university. Jaya. Thank you for the webinar. You mentioned that QWE can be backdated from as long as you like. Does the whole process of the SQE need to be completed within a certain time frame? Good question. When would QWE start uh, started affect this? OK, so they've said you can reach back as far as you want in time. Obviously, Anno Domini will actually impact. So um, <laughs> it can't be from before you were born. Sorry, facetious comment. But um, yeah, uh, you need to have a solicitor who's confirming it. So. Um, that person needs to remember you and still be on the roll to be able to confirm it. They don't need still to be practicing, but they still need to be regulated by the SRA. Um, so, um, yup. Um, there isn't a deadline by which the QWE needs to be confirmed. It doesn't need to be done after the SQE2. Indeed, the SRA um, says that it's prepped for the SQE2. So therefore, normally you do some, if not all of it, before you sit your SQE2 exam as it's prepped for it. Whatever happens, you're not going to be admitted unless those four criteria are met or you've had an exemption. So you will have to have your QWE if you are not exempted from it, um, confirmed before the SRE will admit you. I hope that uh, answers your question, John. So, Francisca, do you know real cases of qualified lawyers that have been exempt from SQE2? I've seen it on uh, LinkedIn. People I've helped are still in their 180 days. So I haven't been told by any that I've helped that they've yet been um, exempted. But I've, hit, and I, but I've seen oh, actually on the WhatsApp groups as well, people saying, yes, I've got exemption. So it is happening. This is exemption from the SQE2 foreign qualified lawyer. Yes. Um, right, uh, Abade. I have done the and LLB, ABD, LPC from the UK, and I am qualified foreign lawyer um, with post qualification two year experience in Pakistan as an advocate. Can I use the LPC as evidence to apply under the qualified lawyers route? Um, 
Now that I'm going back to this this lady from Guyana who it ended up, she had the LPC. Um, uh, she was going to apply for exemption from SQE2, but the SRA said that she had to get um, her QW exempted. So that's one route. Um, or, or else you can say, uh, right, I'll sit the S SQE1 one, one, uh, uh, and get exemption from SQE2. Um, yeah, different things on that. I mean, the way is open to you, but there's different wrinkles on that. And I would double check that with SRA admissions um, exactly where you are with this. The LLB is, is all real. I mean, yeah, so you, you're on the route there, but just double check that because there's some strange quirks in there. Oh, Diane, when signing off QWE, what does a solicitor who is signing it off look for? What is the process for confirming the QWE and signing off? So let's go through this again. Um, it will be down to the, the confirming solicitor and their view on this. I can just give my view, okay? So, um, but I have done, I have confirmed the qualifying work experience as an external for 45 people. So, it's not like the LPC training contract where you had certain criteria and such like, because remember the SRA is testing everything in the exams. So here for the QWE, there are certain um, soft skills that the SRA say that you have got to have the um, opportunity of acquiring. When they were pushed recently, they eventually said, well, the minimum is two out of 18. Frankly, as far as I'm concerned, if you're going to have two of them, you're going to have 16 or so of them, to be honest, when you're doing proper QWE. So it's matching those criteria. Now, I haven't got them. I'm not going to pull up the form. There, there is a um, form that the SRA has produced as an example of what you could use to uh, check that people are getting the skills. Don't have to use it at all. Could be nothing at all. This, the, the solicitor just needs to say, yes, they've been getting um, qualifying work experience, which meets at least two of those soft skills, which are like le legal research, being able to spot ethical issues, being able to gather information, analyze it, produce solutions for your clients, negotiations, there might be advocacy, uh, being able to establish good working relations with your clients, with other uh, professionals, uh, being able to communicate effectively. These are the sorts of skills which are in that list there. And um, so as an external, I have to see I have to see evidence of the example that you've given of meeting that um, uh, uh, competence. If it's someone who was working for a solicitor, then they've seen that as they've been working for them. The process, again, is that you would ask the if it's an internal, you would say, look, please. Um, uh, can you agree to be my confirming solicitor? If they say yes, then um, get their SRA uh, number. You go on to uh, your My SRA profile on the SRA website and you put in the name of the organization, uh, the uh, start and end date of the QWE, how many months full time equivalent that comes to, and you search for the um, confirming solicitor via their SRA number. That will then prompt the SRA to email that solicitor to ask them to confirm. They follow that link to their own My SRA uh, profile on the SRA website, and um, they uh, will answer a number of questions which will prompt the SRA website to email you to say it's been confirmed. So that's the process. As an external, because I didn't see the work while you were doing it, I have to go through a bit, bit more of a process of actually seeing the work. So I usually take about an hour and a half um, on a Zoom to do that. Um, and then I need to reach out, usually again by Zoom, to the um, supervisor of the uh, um, aspiring solicitor to get some feedback, which I'll pop into a statement, we both sign. And then, um, you know, having done the work required by the SRA, then it's the same process for you um, asking, um, the SRA effectively to reach out to me to ask me to confirm. I'll move on, so there's quite a few questions. Mohammed, I got a master's degree in the UK and a degree uh, in law from Saudi Arabia. Well, that's brilliant. Uh, well done, congratulations. Uh, the SRA just says one degree, so you've, you've doubled up there. It doesn't make any difference. You've met the criteria twice. You still have to meet the other elements, but well done, Mohammed. Um, right, what about my QWE uh, scenario obeyed? 
Yeah, sorry, I've gone back over that. So you've done the, uh, you got your degree, you got the LPC, you're a foreign qualified lawyer. Um, so um, you could be saying that you're applying for exemption from SQE2. I doubt if they're going to give you exemption from SQE1 under, under the LPC. They seem to want you to do one of the exams. Um, but I, in your situation, Abate, I would really reach out to the SRA to get chapter and verse because there's that weird thing where if you're going for the LP, as a foreign qualified lawyer, you're going to use or well, you want to use the LPC as exemption from doing the SQE1. They seem to require you to do um, QWE or prove that you have confirmed uh, uh, qualifying work experience which is the only scenario I know where a foreign qualified lawyer has to, or sorry, is not exempt from the QWE. So I would double check that with, with the SRA because it's a slightly weird scenario that, which I've come across, but I don't think is fair. Uh, uh, hello? Zara. Hello? Hello, can you hear me in Gamara? I'm sorry, I just, uh, I couldn't uh, uh, stay quiet. I, I have to just ask this question, if you, if you don't mind. Who is this, hello? sorry? Hello, is this Abadur Rahman? This is Abadur Rahman. Hello? Okay. Yeah, can, yes. can I ask you? Yes. Basically, uh, the, the main question was mine was that, that uh, I've heard you uh, say in various words, uh, WhatsApp group chats that one can use one's experience for as a foreign qualified lawyer to gain exemption from the SQE2. On your website, it states it's easier to prove, likely, compared to the SQE1. Can I use Correct. my... I'm sorry? Correct. Yes. Um, uh, I just wanted to ask you if I wanted to use uh, uh, the SQE, uh, well, if I wanted to gain exemption from the SQE one as well as SQE two, uh, but for SQE one I used to, I want to use my uh, my LPC as well as my LLB honors, which I've done from the UK as evidence uh, to gain exemption because I've seen the contents and they're more or less the same, which I have studied. So I just wanted to ask you, will they consider that, or so if in that scenario, what I'm trying to understand is that you have said that if they if they are likely to confirm the uh, give me an exemption from SQE one and SQE uh, two, then they could ask me to do the QWE or how is it? Um, let me just uh, share my screen again. Um, where's it gone here? <clears throat> so we had this weird scenario. Um, let me find this in here. Um, So the SRA has brought some clarity now in this situation. Um, so first of all, you need to tell the SRA you wish to take this option. You do this by completing the relevant form on the website and there's a link to it. This means that you will now need to register or sit or pass the SQE2 and prove that you passed your LPC. The SRA will ask for the certificate and have the two years full-time uh, qualifying work experience confirmed. So it's the only situation where I know that a foreign qualified lawyer will actually have to have QWE confirmed. So it's a weird situation. So you get exemption in that scenario from the SQE1, but you have to sit the SQE2. Whether they will let you apply for exemption from SQE2 as well, I'm not sure. Now, I don't know the exact scenario because I've not seen it happen. But I have with an MCT, sorry, with a QLTS heard of the SQE because someone told me about it saying, first of all, oh, yes, you'll get exemption from SQE1. Then when the person applied for exemption for SQE2, they then revoked the exemption from SQE1. So that's why I'm saying go and speak to them, because it's 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 an area where I almost feel like they're making it up as they're going along. And I'm just doing my best to share what I've learned from what people have told me. And this one here, you know, uh, I put it up there because it just seemed weird. That was confirmed. That is what they said in that scenario, yeah. which is close to what you're saying. Yeah. So uh, the best bet for me then is that to apply for the SQE2 exemption, uh, which I can get if, if uh, everything's likely to happen. Well, I think they might, you might be in an either or situation. You either get exemption from SQE1 through the LPC or exemption from SQE2. But I really do think speak to the SRA because I'm not the SRA. Yes, basically I'm just uh, getting guidance is that if I just go for the SQB2 exemption based on being a foreign qualified lawyer, are they likely to grant the exemption because your website stated that it's easier yes. to prove? It's easier to prove. Yes, yeah. 
So you, you then have to sit in the SQE1, you'll get exemption from SQE2, and you'll be exempted from the QWE requirement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, so, thank you very much. So then, then you end up sitting the SQE1, but the rest you're exempted from. So yeah. um, I'm going I'm to move on because there's a lot of questions here. Um, thank you. Thank if you. that's okay. Um, right. Varun, is there an SRA requirement for a foreign qualified lawyer to provide evidence of works which is confidential or only a referral letter from the supervisor who is also a foreign qualified lawyer is enough against the legal work experience gained within two years? So that's a good question. So we're talking here of foreign qualified lawyers who are applying for an exemption from the SQE2. So the um, requirement is for a letter um, from a referee um, who is your supervisor for the work that's, you know, that you're talking about, the period you're talking about. So if you had two periods of one year each, then you would need a referral letter from the supervisor for each period. OK, um, you're not showing the work. You're just talking about it. And it could be in fairly broad terms, as far as I know. And the SRA are relying upon effectively the um, uh, regulatory body in your own jurisdiction that has uh, qualified you as a lawyer and the good word of your um, uh, supervisor who's writing the uh, letter of, of reference or in fact you're most likely to draft the letter of reference for them to sign um, now if they are they don't have to be a, a foreign qualified lawyer the, the 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 supervisor does not have to be i got that confirmed fairly recently by the sra um and then someone else in the sra uh, disagreed, so I sent, told them to go and <laughs> sort it out. But as far as I know, because I have it in writing, the supervisor does not have to be a foreign qualified lawyer. If they are, then get a um, certificate, certificate of good um, standing from their local bar or, 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 or um, uh, a regulatory body. If they're not, but they have professional, um, they are a professional, then something if you can from that professional um, regulatory body or at least their qualifications if they're not any of those then explain in the letter of reference um uh, why they were suitable but effectively they're explaining in the letter you've drafted for them why they were suitable to be a supervisor for you now again that guidance is in the um uh, the, the article um, on our website um, and you can download that um, and that's the information I have from the SRA on that. Again, Cyprus has been exempted from SQE2 by agreed exemption. Yeah, you still have to ask for it. Um, I uh, am Waro um, Hamidi. I am a foreign uh, lawyer in Iraq with a master's degree in international business law from Finland. Wow. Uh, do I have to sit both the SQE1 and the SQE2? Probably the SQE1 because the SRA wants you to, if you're going to be an English solicitor, prove that you understand the English law, but you're likely to get exemption from SQE2, providing you have two years um, uh, uh, professional legal work experience. Uh, Michelle Farr. Hi, I'm a Silex graduate. Uh, am I right in thinking I can cross over to complete the SQE1 and to, to qualify as a solicitor instead of continuing the route to become a legal executive? You can. Now, I, I'm not really up on um, cross uh, sort of transitional arrangements. My instinct is to say that if you're um, Silex qualified, that doesn't qualify you as a solicitor, because I've been quite clear about this about barristers as well. Um, so yes, you can sit the SQE1 and SQE2, absolutely. You're likely to have qualifying work experience already, so you can get that confirmed. But again, it has to be confirmed by an SRA regulated solicitor, not by a Silex or, or, or legal exec. Double check with the SRA, but that's my understanding of that situation. Dinara. I have an LLM from QMUL and partially completed my GDL from BPP. Note to my question above. Apologies, I can't remember what you wrote, but uh, let me carry on. I also work in the UK as an in-house lawyer or paralegal for 10 years. Ingemar, uh, I am wondering if we can discuss my issue separately. Very happy. Reach out to me. Um, you've got my contact details. It sounds as though you have QWE. It's just a question of whether um, you can get evidence to show me. We can talk it through there. Um, GDL partially completed with BPP. 
you don't need to spend any more money on it. It's not required under the S, uh, SQE. Um, the GDL isn't. Um, SQE1, SQE2, yep, you're going to have to pass those. Okay. Uh, Guyane, uh, what will co be considered as evidence? So that's down to the, I presume you're talking about the qualifying work experience. So that is down to the um, judgment of the confirming solicitor. Um, if you are having a confirming solicitor from within your organization confirm your QWE, that really isn't much of a consideration because they would have seen you working as you did the QWE. If it's an external, then <clears throat> what I would say for what I'm doing, it's going to vary dependent upon what you want to show me uh, and, and, and what the example is and what the competence is. A lot of it is emails as evidence. Sometimes you know, drafting is one of the skills there um, uh, or, co or competencies. Then it's going to be documents. Sometimes, you know, one of the things is keeping yourself up to date with um, the law. So that might be certificates of attendance, but it could be emails proving that as well. So a lot of it is by, about emails. One of the things, one of the competencies is um, being able to keep good records of your work. It could be there that you're showing the systems in which you save the evidence. So I hope that unpacks it uh, a little bit for you. Abate, what about the SQE2? Can use my qualified lawyer experience to get exemption? Um, I think we've spoken since you wrote that. Um, OK, um, Yurima Grace, my confusion with the SRA requirements is related to the areas of law that you need to cover in your practice. I'm a new uh, New York uh, licensed attorney and also qualified in Venezuela. Wow. I can practice any type of law in the US and in Venezuela, but my practice is mostly transactional corporate business law. I have years of um, practice and I can apply for an exemption from the SQE2, but I think it will take too long and is sort of burdensome process. So I'm just sitting the, uh, uh, for the SQE2. Never practice criminal property, et cetera, and probably only for pro bono cases. Yeah, um, the SRA is wanting people to have a broad knowledge of English uh, law. You would have seen the topics that they're putting in there. Um, Sorry, that's what they put in the exam. I would have thought with the practice you've got that the SQE2 you can get exemption from, but you will need to pass your SQE1. Um, the SQE2 exemption application to me doesn't seem particularly onerous. Uh, the form is very, very simple. Writing a reference letter for your supervisor is not, I mean, it's page long, something like that, page and a half. You're not going through detailed analysis uh, and evidence gathering into a dossier. It, 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 it's not too heavy uh, a, a responsibility. Again, have a look at what, it, what the information I put on the website there, but I would have thought, um, um, uh, Yurima, that you could get your exemption. It takes 180 days, they say, so what's that, uh, half a year, but I do think they're being quicker than that. Anyway, obeyed. What about uh, SQE2? Can one use one's qualified law experience as I'm... As, Abed, we, we've spoken about this. Is, is this OK? Um, I who? Very helpful. Thank you. Chucks, I am a foreign qualified lawyer living in the UK and I've already passed my QLTS MCT. Did you say I could either take the SQE2 or SQE1 to complete the qualification and then apply for registration in, by March 2023? Let me share my screen again and find the page on the um, QLTS. Um, actually, there it is. Oh, there we, there we go. So, in summary, if you passed your MCT and OSCE, apply. If you passed the MCT but not the OSCE, which I think is your situation, take and pass the SQE2 and apply for admission, or take and pass the SQE1 and apply for exemption from SQE2. Okay. Um, and as you're a foreign qualified lawyer, you will be exempted from the QWE element. All right, let's go back to where we were. Um, Chucks, I hope that answers your question. Zara, um, Ingemar, you seem to have missed a few questions in the middle. Um, reproducing the question here again. 
Thank you for your guidance. It was very helpful, though I uh, may still pick your brain from time to time. I'm a qualified lawyer in India. I have work experience of seven years um, in litigation, et cetera, et cetera. Do you think I can be exempt from both? Um, if not, um, do you have to apply for exemption from SQE2 only after you pass the SQE1? No, you don't. You can apply for that earlier, as far as I know. Um, can you do it first? And Yes. So and then take the SQE one. I believe so. OK, I'll scroll back and, and see if I've missed some questions, because when I go off screen, then it puts it out of order, I'm afraid. Um, so to me, it looks as though you've got plenty of past experience that should be able to get you exemption from SQE two. So long as you have a supervisor who's willing to sign a letter of reference. Kuna, hi Ingmar. I think you have missed my question unless you are not doing it chronologically. I was trying to do it chronologically, but when I've gone off back to share my screen to answer someone's question, it's jumped me around, I'm afraid. So thank you for copying that again. Hi Ingmar, I'm a foreign qualified lawyer. I passed the MCT. Now I plan to sit the SQE2. Um, and I was wondering if my current semi-legal role as a law for, at a law firm in England can impede my overall character and suitability. I don't think so. Um, I understand the QWE is not relevant for foreign qualified lawyers, and you said they look for skills over, over law. For the QWE, it is about the skills. Will I need my partner to sign my experience for me? No. Um, you, you, you have passed the MCT, you are going to sit the SQE2, um, you won't need the QWE, so then it's going to be the character and suitability thing is between you and the SRA, as far as I understand it. It's not going to involve anyone else. I hope that that helps you. It should be fairly straightforward, I think, for you, Kuna. Adaisi, and forgive me if I pronounce that wrong. Hi, Ingmar. I had my LLB in the UK, called to the bar in Nigeria, been working in a law firm here for five years. Does any exemption apply to me? Yes, SQE2. Uh, secondly, what do you mean by SRA regulated solicitor? I didn't really understand this. Okay, so. Um, I'm emphasizing the fact that a solicitor is one of the types of lawyers in England and Wales, not the UK. The UK has three legal jurisdictions. Scotland is a separate jurisdiction and quite different law. Northern Ireland is a separate jurisdiction. England and Wales is one united uh, jurisdiction. The SRA regulates solicitors. Nothing to barristers are completely different. Silex, so um, legal executives are completely different. OK, so we're talking about um, a solicitor and I'm just emphasizing that the SQE is an exam to qualify as a solicitor. The regulatory body is the SRA. And so I'm just emphasizing that it's an SRA regulated solicitor. Um, so someone could be retired and no longer on the role, but still call themselves a solicitor, but then effectively not regulated by the SRA any longer. So you don't need to still be working, but you do still need to be on the roll with the SRA so that the mechanics of it works and they have that line of regulation through this confirming solicitor through to the aspiring solicitor. I hope that explains that. But for you, I would have thought that you're a foreign qualified lawyer, you've got more than two years um, experience, uh, experience working, so you would have to sit the SQE1, but would be exempt or be able to get exemption from SQE2 and um, you will be anyway exempt from the qualifying work experience element. Win, uh, Ingemar, can you share the checklist which we can show our supervisors when requesting confirmation of QWE? Um, I, yeah, I, I can't really, it's on the website. I just don't want to jump away and lose where I am on this. Um, the, the, the SRA has given a suggested list. Um, let's see what I can do. I can bring up the one that I use, which I've, um, so I've got that fairly easy to uh, find, I think, um, which is the one that, just bear with me a second. Uh, yeah, OK, I'll sh I'll share this um, for you. And I'm going to lose where it's win win so I don't lose my place. OK, so. 
this element onwards is taken from the SRA suggested um, form. It's codified effectively the competencies they expect an English solicitor to acquire. Okay. Uh, and I'm not really wanting to go through them in all in detail, but they're act honestly with integrity, maintain your competence and knowledge, work, know how to work within the limits of your competence and supervision, drawing on sufficient knowledge and understanding, obtaining, knowing how to obtain facts before you then start analyzing them, developing solutions for your clients, undertaking legal research, drafting documents, effective spoken and written advocacy in and out of court, negotiating, planning your work, communicating clearly, effectively, orally and in writing, um, being able to establish and maintain effective professional relations with your client and with others, professional people, managing, planning your work again, maintaining accurate and complete clear, clear records and uh, applying good business practice. So those are the 18 competencies. Um, you don't need to have all of those, um, but um, let's bring that up here. Stop the share for a second. So when I just run through that and now I've lost where I was on my place, which is the trouble with going away from the screen. When, okay. Um, that can be found on the SRA website. Um, whether that's followed by say an internal confirming solicitor, it doesn't matter. It can be, it doesn't have to be, there's no requirement, it's not sent to the SRA. Um, okay, um, I hope that's of help. Dinara, can the document review work be included as, okay, let me read that again. Can the document review work be included as qualified legal experience as well? Um, I'm going to try, I'm not quite sure if I understand that. If you're saying, can review of documents be qualifying work experience? It could be, um, but normally one would want a little bit more because is it the provision of work uh, of, of legal um, uh, services? If the document review then leads to um, drafting, negotiation, advice, those sorts of things, then yes, indeed, that's normal corporate commercial work. If it's just reviewing documents and nothing else, then I would think you might struggle to have two or more competencies from that list. So it is very, very case specific on this. Um, Helen, thank you, Ingmar, for your advice. Very informative. I'm currently a paralegal and have passed the LPC. I have been a paralegal for nine months. Would the supervising solicitor be able to take off my probation period from my time here? And secondly, how early do I need to inform the SRA, SRA of me taking the SQE before I have completed my two years work experience or once I have obtained two years and now wish to apply for the SQE too? So good question, Helen. Whether it's probation period or not is totally irrelevant. It's whether what you're doing is um, uh, fits within the definition of qualifying work experience. So, as I said, it could be voluntary. Um, the SRA even gave the uh, citizens advice as an example of where you could acquire qualifying work experience. Now, on that point, um, I'm actually a trustee of the citizens advice in uh, North Oxfordshire, South North Hants. I would say that if you were giving advice, well, first of all, if you're being trained, that's not the provision of legal services. So the time you spend training wouldn't count. If you're giving advice on debt, which is a big thing that they do, probably not the provision of legal services, probably more the provision of financial services. So it wouldn't count. But if you were giving advice on housing or on immigration or on family issues, then or even on benefit law, then again, that would be the provision of legal services. So. Um, the fact that you're a paralegal, you passed your LPC, you're likely then to be given exemption from um, uh, the SQE1. QWE, you've got nine months so far. Supervising solicitor shouldn't take off the probation period because if you were doing qualifying work experience during your probation period, you were doing qualified work experience. So the employment status is irrelevant. Um, how early can you apply? 
as soon as you want. You don't have to wait for any particular point. I've had people whose QWF confirmed before they've started their SQE1, um, some who've done it after they finished the SQE2. It really doesn't matter. Um, what I would say, though, is uh, that if you're going to start a job, which you hope will be QWE, and there's no confirming solicitor in there, then reach out to ask the person you want to confirm it if they regard it as being QWE, because the last thing you want to do is spend two years working there only to find that there's no one who's going to confirm it for you because they don't regard it as QWE. Similarly, if you're in a job where it is QWE and then you're going to leave, make sure you get it confirmed before you leave, because it's much harder to uh, have, let's say, an external or indeed even an internal, but certainly an external, to um, confirm the work when you've left and perhaps the, the firm that you've left does not want to, for confidentiality reasons, allow someone else to view the work. So get it confirmed before you leave is just a practical tip I would give you. Chucks, many thanks. Danny, I think my question got missed. Sorry about this. Um, how many exemptions will work for Italian qualified lawyers? Or how many? How exemption? This is in terms of chances of getting an exemption from both modules, as in SQE1 and SQE2, with more than four years of work experience in the UK. Where the work experience is doesn't really matter. And as a foreign qualified, if you're a foreign qualified lawyer, which you said Italian qualified, the um, SQE2 doesn't count. But if you want to get exemption from SQE2, uh, you will need to have two years work experience uh, and you'll need to get a reference letter for that. Um, so um, I would expect you wouldn't get exemption from SQE1, but you would get exemption from SQE2 by filling in that form and sending it that in together with the uh, certificate of good standing, your money and the reference letter. And, and, and please do check through the article I put on the website, which um, will um, set it all out there for you with a guidance note on the content of the reference letter. <clears throat> um, Mohammed, you're brave doing self-study for prep for the SQE. Good luck. People have asked me about that. I don't have any special knowledge on that. I'm not involved in the training of students for uh, the exams. Um, yeah, good luck. Um, and by all means, set up groups to support each other. Really good idea. Um, <laughs> thank you. It's 2 a.m. here in India, so I'm signing off. I fully understand that. Um, the next uh, session is likely to be uh, during a lunchtime, which will make it easier for India, Singapore and such like. Um, well done, Mohammed. So you got there, guys. Um, his, um, uh, and what I'll do is I'll take a copy of that. Uh, put it in my message in here. And what I might do is actually take a note of that. <clears throat> and if that's okay with you, I'll join as well and try and help people with questions. The answer. Kuna, thanks uh, to everyone. What is the market like in the UK for foreign qualified lawyers who have passed the SQE? Is a master's degree necessary to improve job prospects? Yeah, ask everyone because I don't have any specific knowledge in that. <laughs> Um, anecdotally, I hear that some lawyers, or some law firms are not really fully, they think that the SQE2 is new and unknown and not as good as the LPC because lawyers don't like change. Um, you know, they're going, to, they're going to need talent and the number of people qualifying through the LPC is going to diminish. So they're going to have to uh, take people on who pass through the SQE. As far as the SRA is concerned, they're qualified solicitors. And um, I don't see any reason why to, to think that the quality would be any less than under the LPC. Remember, under the LPC, no one ever failed a training contract. So how rigorous was that? It's going to be down to market forces, to be honest, I think. And if you have any particular angle uh, area of specialization, um, uh, contacts, those are the best things I think for you being able to get a job. But I'm not a legal recruiter, so I can't give you any definitive answer on that, I'm afraid. Um, so thanks from Helen, thanks from Daniela, Mohammed, you and Grace, lots of thanks in there. Uh, and I will now scroll back to see if there's anything I think I've missed um, on that. 
apologies if I did miss you. Um, as I said, jumping off the screen means that I'm um, going to miss things. <clears throat> I recognize that. Okay, we did the time frame, no real time frame. Um, yeah, I think I've covered everything. I've got one new letter message at the bottom. Uh, I just thanks. Okay. Um, okay. And now, if anyone does need um, an external to uh, uh, SRA solicitor to confirm their QWE, then feel free to reach out. And what I normally do then is organize a free, no obligation Zoom to talk things through, or indeed, if you think that's something that's relevant to someone else, um, feel free to put them in touch um, or go and have a look at the website. There's lots of information on there. Um, and um, yeah, I confirmed, uh, two people today, which was nice, as in I went onto the website having done 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 the review. Um, so <clears throat> so there's another one here. Okay, what's that? There's the link that someone put in for the group that they were creating. Um, right, we've got uh, I'm happy to wait on a little bit to see if anyone has any further questions. I appreciate I've gone through a lot in this uh, session. I'm hoping that most people came with some knowledge. Um, and um, it's nice to recognize some of the names that uh, were coming up during the uh, um, all, all the stuff on LinkedIn and such like. So uh, excellent. OK. Any other questions from anyone? It's all gone quiet. <laughs> okay. Well, if there's no questions from anyone else, you've got your last moment, last chance to speak now, then what I'll do is uh, I'll end the meeting. We've been going for just a, nearly an hour and a half. Um, and um, keep in touch and good luck with your journey. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Good night. Thank you, bye.